Hello everyone, my name is Valerie Miller and I am the Outreach Coordinator for Future Energy Systems. But before that, I did my PhD in land reclamation at the University of Alberta and that's what we're going to talk about today, land reclamation. So becoming an earth doctor or land reclamation, that's what we're going to talk about. So what do you think land reclamation is? Have you guys ever heard it used in your classroom or from your parents or on the news? When I think of land reclamation, I think of being an earth doctor. So what is an earth doctor? Well, first think about what a human doctor does. Any ideas? So when a person gets sick or they injure themselves or they want to make sure they don't get sick, they might go see a doctor. And just like humans, the earth can sometimes get sick. And an earth doctor helps to heal the earth when it gets damaged or broken. It can also help maintain the earth's health or prevent it from getting damaged or sick. So land reclamation is the process of converting disturbed or damaged land to its former or other productive uses. The reclamation plan that we develop for each project is based on what the land is going to be turned into, its end land use, as we call it. But do we need reclamation? What do you guys think? Our human population is increasing at a really drastic rate and with that, we need to clear more land for food, homes, have more resources for industry and for jobs. So we are creating a lot more disturbances, which means we need a lot more reclamation. But first, what is a disturbance? So a disturbance is a change in an ecosystem. It can be negative or positive, but damage or degradation, that means a negative change. So can you guys think of any disturbances in Alberta? What about other parts of the world? Well, I have a few. We have pipelines. We have mining for coal, metals, oil. We also have building cities, building roads for transportation, forestry where we're cutting down all these trees. And disturbances can be really long. So something like a city or roads, those are gonna be there for a very long time. But others might be much shorter. So like pipelines or mining, they'll need to be reclaimed much quicker. So now we're gonna talk about a few words we use when we think of reclamation. The first is restoration. That's a type of reclamation where it's the process of reassembling the community or ecosystem after a disturbance with the goal of returning the site to what it was prior to the disturbance. So we're going back to what was there before. But the hard question is, is this even possible? There's so much unknown in ecosystems that it's very difficult to return what was there before. So restoration is more commonly used when the intent is to restore through actions that will return the site to its prior state. So for example, planting certain species or creating the landscape in a certain way. It sets the stage for longer term restoration. The next word we're gonna learn is revegetation. So that is when we are trying to provide vegetation or plants on a barren or disturbed landscape. It can be done actively when we're actually planting or passively when we let the plants come in on their own because there might be plants around them. So when we're doing revegetation, there's a few things we need to think about. We need to think about what the plants need. All plants have certain requirements, how much water, what climate they live in, how much nutrients they need and many other things. So you need to make sure the plants you pick fit the ecosystem you have. You also need to think about where are you getting your plants? Are you collecting your own plants or is someone collecting them for you? Are you buying them or are you getting them from your surrounding ecosystem? So there's a lot of thought about where you're gonna get those plants. We also need to think about how we're gonna plant those plants. Are you going to seed, which can be very quick and cheap? Or are you gonna use transplants, which is a lot more expensive and takes more time, but transplants can often be more successful. Finally, you need to think about what plants are needed. Are there community groups in the area that need certain plants for food or for medicine? Are there animals in the area that need certain plants for shelter, for food, for survival? So there's a lot of things to think about when we think of revegetation. And the next word we're going to learn is remediation. So that's the focus on the removal or reduction of contaminants or unwanted substances. Contaminants could be a gas spill, 
or metals in the soil or even salt in the soil. There's a lot of things that can be contaminants that we don't want there. And the technique that we pick for remediation depends on what the contaminant is. Some techniques don't work for all contaminants, as well as how much money you have to spend and how much time it'll take for the technique to work. Sometimes if the contaminant is putting the surrounding environment at risk, you need to use a very fast technique to get it out of the soil or the water or the plants. So now we're gonna focus on a couple different techniques. These aren't all of the remediation techniques, but we're just gonna have a quick look at some. So some techniques don't actually remove the contaminants from the soil. Dig and dump removes the soil and puts it in a landfill. Encapsulation stabilizes the contaminants in the soil on site so that they can't escape. On the other hand, thermal desorption uses heat to remove volatile contaminants. So they heat up the soil and gases of contaminants will leave. Bioremediation uses microorganisms to remove contaminants, often by adding nutrients or adding extra oxygen and mixing up the soil to allow the microorganisms to uh, remove those contaminants. Phytoremediation does a similar thing, but instead of microorganisms removing the contaminants, it's the plants themselves that are removing. And finally, we have natural attenuation, which is the natural ability of the soil or the water or the plants to remove contaminants without human intervention. We have to be careful if we're using natural attenuation to make sure there isn't risk to the surrounding environment, as well as that the contaminants will actually remove over time. And finally, we're gonna talk about soil reclamation, which is actually what I studied in my PhD. So often in land reclamation, we have to improve a soil or build a new soil. Any ideas why we might have to do that? Well, soil is often stockpiled, which means it is taken from the ground and placed in a pile during a disturbance, so that way we can use that soil again at the end. But sometimes that soil quality isn't very good after it's been piled up for a long time. And in some sites, the soil isn't saved or there isn't any soil to save, so there might not be any there. So why don't we let the soil just come back naturally? It can take thousands of years for soil to build up naturally, so we need to find shortcuts to help it come back quicker. So one of those techniques is to build a soil, and that's what I did in my PhD. I built soils using mining waste material. So I built my soil out of crushed rock and human poop, and I mixed that together to create something that could support vegetation. And we can use waste materials to help build those soils or to add to the soil to make them better, uh, things like manure, so cattle or pig or chicken manure. Uh, and there's other materials that we can use as waste. And that helps us use up waste materials and have a better soil. So the final thing we're gonna talk about really quick is reclamation and energy. Alberta is rich in natural resources, especially energy resources with conventional and non-conventional conventional oil and gas. Due to this, Alberta faces major reclamation challenges due to the size of the disturbances, potential cumulative effects, which is all the effects coming together, and technical issues, things like tailings ponds, saline soils, salty soils, that we don't always know how to deal with. And there are many other places in the world that face these similar challenges, but we also need to consider how is reclamation going to change as our future energy changes? What reclamation is going to be required for wind turbines, large solar farms, and many other changes to our energy ecosystem? So we need to think about reclamation and energy now, but also reclamation and energy in the future. And now it's your turn. So you are gonna design your own reclamation plan. Well, thank you so much for listening. And we're going to get right into that now. Hi everybody, thanks so much for learning about the basics of land reclamation with us. Uh, so now we're going to try it ourselves. So if you go below, you can find the link to download this image. It is pretty much an empty landscape. So if you can, print it at home. If you can't, maybe use an app on your computer to color it on there. Uh, if you do print it, grab some crayons, grab some markers, grab some pencil crayons. You can see I've already started filling in my image with my pencil crayons. 
But this is an empty landscape. There's pretty much nothing here. There's no soil, there's no plants, there's no animals. And it's going to be your job to make this a healthy landscape by thinking about all the things you just learned about reclamation. So number one, you need to think about what you want this landscape to be in the end. Is it going to be a forest? Is it going to be a wetland? Is it going to be a city park? So once you've decided on your end land use, then you're going to start filling in the image. So as I said, I've already started filling in my lake. Now I'm going to start uh, planting some bushes. So I'm making sure that I have lots of vegetation to provide food and shelter for the animals that might live in this area, but also to protect the soil from blowing away or washing away. So earlier today, I completed a drawing of a lake uh, that I have reclaimed. So I have all of these different layers of soil because soil is made up of different layers. Uh, we also have some worms in the soil, some animals living underground. I've planted some flowers along the top because this is going to be an important butterfly habitat. And then in my lake, I've made sure I have food and I have shelter with these rocks, as well as making sure I put the sun in because without the sun, our plants won't grow and animals wouldn't have anything. And if you happen to have any stickers at home, now would be a good time to start filling your landscape or your ecosystem with them. So I've got a butterfly. I'm going to put in the sky to eat all of those lovely flowers uh, to get their pollen from the flowers. I've also got some bugs. Bugs play a really important role in all different parts of the ecosystem. They break down plant matter to make food for other uh, plants and animals. They also uh, can aerate the soil, which means add a lot of oxygen to the soil by moving the soil around. I'm also going to add a fish because we don't want to have an empty lake. We want to make sure our lake is full of life. So now it's your turn. Make whatever reclaimed ecosystem you want, but make sure you think about all the different parts of reclamation. Your plants, your animals, do you have any contaminants, everything like that. When you're done, send us your picture on Facebook at Future Energy Systems. Let us know how it went. We're also going to post the rules to a game called Become an Earth Doctor that we have created. Uh, the Land Reclamation International Graduate School created. It's going to take you through all the steps of reclamation and you have to decide how you will successfully reclaim an ecosystem staying on budget and staying on time. So are two really big challenges in this game. You don't need much at home, so uh, check out the rules below for that game uh, and make sure to download your reclaimed ecosystem. Thank you so much everybody. Bye! Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.